the Sullivan Barnes family are having their last breakfast of the 1980s. <laughs> After a decade of technological disappointments, gadget freak Adam is enthusiastic about the 90s. There'll be more games, there'll be more computing stuff, there'll be better TV, and we'll be back to the old world of hardly speaking to each other, probably. <laughs> Mum, George, is worried about the impact of ever more technology on her family. There's bound to be more distractions that pull people further away. Toddler Jude is too young to comment, but Adam's daughter Steph and George's children Ellie and Hamish are about to return to the decade in which they were born. Not that they actually remember it. I have had the experience of the 80s, I've had the experience of the 2000s, so basically it's just in between. So I, I do kind of know what it's going to be like. But the 90s may hold surprises for them all. Throughout their experience, the family have had their very own technical support team. They've arrived to take the technology in the house from the 80s to the 90s. And they've got their work cut out. Sociologist Dr. Ben Highmore specialises in the history of domestic technology. It's the decade of the gadget, an ever-increasing array of consumer technologies demanding more and more attention from families. Tom Rigglesworth is in charge of all their audio-visual devices. In a decade where there were ever more possibilities for home entertainment, he's going to be busy. All this technology meant there were more reasons for the kids to stay in the room, playing with the world's biggest remote control. Gia Milinovic is a lifelong computer geek and technology writer. For me, this decade is going to be quite difficult keeping up with the pace of change with the computer because software and hardware just changed constantly. With the crucial kit in place, there's just time to add a few period flourishes. The house is all set to relive the 1990s. The family have been transformed too, with dress-down 90s clobber. But they have no idea what's now waiting for them behind their own front door. Oh, oh look! Oh, I like this! There we go, look. This is much nicer than the 80s. Look at that. The 80s chintz has been well and truly chucked. Minimalist, that's the word I'm trying to think of. Photographs of pebbles on the beach are very 90s. There's a lot of new gadgets, a lot of, a lot of technology. Wow, what a big telly. Big black telly as well. But progress is still slower than the kids were hoping for. Oh, four channels. We had four in the 80s. It's quite funny how only 19 years ago there was only four channels, and now we have, like, you can get, like, 600 or something. The kitchen's no longer by Laura Ashley. But there's something even more exciting than a style makeover. Wow, it's bigger! We've got oh, a kitchen! It's back. really weird! It's got bigger! Woo! Over the years, the kitchen has evolved from a functional workspace to a bigger and more sociable family hub. Huh? Wow, wow! Oh, yes, we have... The girls, of course, have no memory of the early 90s, but they're pleased to see that not everything changes. See who I can recognise. In a decade when technology was spreading into every corner of our homes... Wow, that's so remote! One object had become so cheap, it was multiplying. Hey. Oh, blimey. Wow. wow! Far Eastern labour, cheaper parts and expanding global economies meant TVs cost 95% less than the model the family had in the 1970s. Can we have this one? Georgie and I will have this one. This is Do we the... need a telly in our room? You've got a video for that. Just because we've got one? We don't need one, do we? We've been saying how nice it's been to be together as a family. We... <laughs> <laughs> have I missed not having a telly? Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. 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 Okay, fine. Tiny. Let's have it then. Yeah, that one's okay. Right. That's fine. By the end of the decade, 
TVs had moved into the rooms of two-thirds of British kids. Bedroom culture had taken over. But the shared experience of family viewing is something Georgie would love to hold on to. I'm hoping the TV reception will be so poor with the aerials they've got that they won't actually choose to sit up here and watch telly. They'll want to come down for the bigger screen that's in the sitting room. So, fingers crossed. The fax machine had also become cheap enough to spread from the office into the home. Now a home phone line could be used to telework, a popular 90s concept that promised we could all work from home. Oh, here it goes. Stand back. Their first fax is from the tech team. We look forward to celebrating the new millennium with you at the end of the decade and suggest that you use all the 90s technology at your disposal to plan your own millennium party. What's a millennium party? It's like the biggest ever New Year's Eve party. People spent a lot of money making it a really exciting night. 90s consumer culture was driven, more than ever before, by exhaustive market research. In the spirit of the times, the tech teams turned the family into a focus group. They're being asked what gadgets they'd like to have delivered to their door. The thing to do will be to shout out things that you think, technology-wise, we should be having in the 90s. <gasps> Remote control cars and boats and planes. Rolling blades. Consoles. Games consoles. Electric scooters. Mm -hmm. What about computers? Mobiles. <laughs> Satellite TV. Though the children can barely remember the decade, they know exactly what they want. <laughs> Hamish attempts to fax their list to the tech team. Never sent a fax before. Thanks to the explosive growth of email, it's something he probably won't ever have to do again. <laughs> On the other side of Reading, the tech team are in their workshop. Here it comes. It's from the house. On the list is mobile phones, satellite TV, the internet, and a request for handheld games from gaming fan Hamish. The 90s was the point at which the games industry just massively took off. And now it's overtaken music sales and it's, you know, certainly gives Hollywood a run for its money. The tech team get a first taste of just how demanding the family is going to be in the coming decade. Please remember we know where you live. Ooh. Slightly sinister. <laughs> yeah. to a facsimile there. Early evening and time to settle down to watch some television. Or rather, some televisions. Good evening and welcome. Tonight... Margaret Thatcher left 10 Downing Street for the last time. Madam Witch. After 11 and a half wonderful years that we leave the United Kingdom in a very, very much better state than when we came here 11 and a half years ago. As 1990 draws to a close, the family has mixed feelings about their higher tech home. We all got, like, tellies in our rooms and stuff, which I think is quite nice, but then in some ways... It's probably a bad thing. I don't know. I think I'm going to enjoy the 90s a lot more than I did the 70s or the 80s. Now that I'd have a TV and a video player, I think I will be spending more time in my bedroom. A new day, and for the Sullivan Barnes family, it's 1991. So now I think you have to write when. Oh, nice one. Attacked uh, military targets in Iraq and Baghdad last night. 
Britain is at war. But escape from the grim news came from an altogether more harmless conflict. Species like these fluffy bunnies face a new threat. The predator disturbing their dreams is an electronic hedgehog. This was the year Sonic the Hedgehog was born, to combat the market dominance of an Italian plumber called Mario. They were the number one video game characters of Sega and...